All right, we're on. What's up, Gibbs? It's Guys here, and welcome to the channel, and more specifically, welcome to the Journey to Pro Music Producer and Engineer series, where I'll be documenting my entire journey of turning my passion for music into a full-time hobby. And if that's something you relate to, obviously click the like and subscribe so you can take this journey along with me. The whole point of this channel is to build a an entire community of people that are on like the same trajectory, right? We're all shooting for the same goal. We all want to be professional. We all want to we all want to be good, you know? And and that's the whole point. Like we learn and grow together and eventually one day we'll all be pros. Right? But we got to put in the effort. We got to put in the time. And this is me just documenting. These are about this is more of like a vlog style series where it's just kind of like it's not like tips and tricks like i'm sure you'll see something that i do that you're like oh that's cool or you'll probably see something that i do and be like oh you could have done it a lot better this way or oh you should have used this plug in or did you know about this or whatever if you have some sort of advice or recommendations for me i'm not the only one that doesn't know so if you know put it in the comments so we can all learn and grow now today is New equipment, Durr. you know what that means. I got new equipment, and we gonna set it up. I've been waiting for this moment for all my life. Maybe not all my life, but like a large portion of my life, you know. Oh, if you're wondering, I have my rebel. Okay, anyone that has seen any of my any of my content knows that I cannot start a production or a mixing sesh, or a mastering sesh without uh, drinking my Red Bull. I can't. I have to have this Red Bull on me. It's my safe place, okay? All right, so let's get it cracking. And yes, that was a, a, a punny pun. Dang it! <laughs> the best thing in the world is a super, like, ice-cold, sugar-free Red Bull. The best thing in the world is that first drink or two of an ice-cold, sugar-free Red Bull. This thing has been sitting there for probably 30 minutes. Now it's not ice-cold. It's okay. It's cold now. Yeah, baby. Okay. So you're probably wondering. This is the first piece of equipment that I got. Probably wondering, what the heck is in the box? Dude, show me what's in the box. I'm about to show you what's in the box. Watch this. Oh, gosh. Hold on, let me get it out. Whoa! Look at this, baby. A Mojave. Uh -huh. So this is, um, I did a lot of research on this. Uh, I needed a microphone and I needed, I can't tell you yet, the other thing. But the, the two things that I needed for sure, I got. And I did a lot of research on these things before I got it. You can't just go out and buy any microphone, any speakers. Oh, I just said it. No. All right. Hold on. Okay, whatever. Any speakers or anything, um, just like for, you can't just go out and just get what what you see on YouTube is like, oh, the best speakers of 2023 or 2024, whatever. It is all based on your room, right? And space available. How close are you sitting to your speakers? How close are they to the wall? There's a lot of the, the acoustics of your room. There's a lot of stuff that goes into it. And you don't want to just get any speakers. Like, you get the right speakers. So for my room, I've done a lot of research, okay? It's not just me making it up. All right, I've done a lot of, a lot of it. For my room, because it sucks, it's literally like a little tiny square room. It is literally on the brink of this close to being too small, um to be able to treat, to be 
a room that you can do music in, right? So, um, basically, I had to, I'm sure you see this, this acoustic treatment. Those are those little two inch like foam pads you get on uh, Amazon and then a bookshelf. So bookshelf for diffusion and then those little pads for literally all it does is like that does nothing. It's not good for mixing, not good for mastering, not good for anything other than basically what I did with this room because it's the best I could do with the money that I have right now is turn it into a vocal booth. So my this is my stand. So I have a shield here. And then I also have, where'd it go? I don't know, somewhere. It's like the eyeball thing. So I put that over the microphone. And basically, I just built a vocal booth in here. And that's literally the best I can do with my budget. So I have this $100 microphone. Granted, it is probably the best one, if not top three best microphones for, you know, $100 and below. It's a Audio-Technica AT2020, right? That's all I got right now. So I needed to upgrade. And, and there's a, like this, there's this weird around like 5K and 2,500. And then in the 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 sweet spot, like the where you get your most of your clarity between one and two k, it's just like this weird like weird thing. I don't know, but I can't get it out. If I dig it out too much with an EQ, it just ruins and it thins it out, thins out the vocal, and it's just bad, right? So, and, but I have to work with it now. So I, I needed to, to upgrade my microphone. So I got this. And this one, um, from everything that I've, I've learned, um, it's the best for, you know, small vocal room or small room studio. And um, I think it was $700. I think, yeah, I think it was 700 bucks. So for like a mid-grade, it's not like super budget friendly, but it's also not expensive. It's still on the lower end, but it's kind of like upper lower end. It's the upper echelon of low end budget, right? So like my status went from like down here to like way up right here. You know what I mean? Like I'm just that much cooler because I have this. All right. And then of course, I told you already, I freaking ruined it. And I got myself some speaker. Bye, baby. Some Cali Audio IN5s. The reason why I got these, and I'm gonna, it's gonna be like kind of like an unboxing thing. The reason why I got them is because on these, these are. My room is small, right? So I'm not about to go get some massive speakers, okay? These are 5-inch, right? So IN5. It's not inch 5. I don't know what IN stands for, but they're 5-inch woofers. Are they called woofers? Whatever. Uh, the cone is 5 inches, right? So it's a perfect, perfect for this room, right? It's a three-way three-way coincident studio speaker. So it has, it, it, it'll it give me like the whole spectrum, right? Gives me mids, it gives me lows, it gives me highs, all in this one speaker. I do have a, a subwoofer down here that I will have hooked up and I'm going to go back and forth. I'm going to go, I'm going to turn it off and see what kind of response I get. And it's all based off of your room, right? So I'm going to see what kind of response I get with these without the woofer and then with the woofer and I'll, you know, kind of go from there. But anyways, these are three way and they have little settings on the back that depending on where you have to place them in your room, like here, I have to set them like right up against the wall 
because there's not enough room, right? So, but there's a setting for that. There's a setting for how far are they? Are they up against the wall? And are they, you know, tilted 45 degrees towards you? Are is like equilateral triangle thing. Whatever your situation is, they have a setting for it. So, and it's Cali Audio. Like, if you know who Jeff Ellis is, the the guy that mixes all of like Doja Cat and um, a lot of big names. He uses only Cali Audio. So it, I didn't get it just because Jeff Ellis said, hey, I use only Cali Audio. I, I, it, but it was something that was like, oh, okay. I have heard someone that is at the top of their game, you know, at the top of the whole industry, say that they only use that. So with that, I, you know, I can say that my research is probably, you know, not bad. He has the IN eights is usually what he, he mixes on. But with that said, this right here is what we're going to do. I want to show you this real quick before we get to unboxing. Move, move my down piece. Move it. I like to move it, move it. This sound ID reference. So if you don't know what this is, it is a... Basically, it's a room analysis software that flattens out the your room response. What that means, if you don't know, it'll take this little pencil mic. It's going to tell me a bunch of different places in the room to hold it, right? And then it will shoot out this little blast of, of sound that goes all the way from, it'll go whoop, and it'll go from 20 hertz all the way up to 20K. I think that's... Either way, really low to really high, right? And it'll read your room. The response that your room gives to that sound, it captures it. And then it'll tell you after like 30 different spots, it'll tell you like, okay, this is the, see this line? I'm going to turn this off real quick. Oh, I'm on the wrong one. See this, <laughs> see this line? That's the response of these headphones. So these are the headphones that I have on right now. These are the, this is the studio pair, or the studio monitor pair that I have right now. This was, turn this off. Okay, this was the response that it captured with those speakers, right? You see this huge dip right here around 80 hertz, which is pretty normal for any room in any speaker set. And then it's like super peak up here at like 200 or whatever. And it's actually pretty, pretty flat from there on out. But what it does is it takes that response and then inverts it, right? See how this is literally the same thing, but it's inverted. What that does is it flattens out your response. So your room and your speakers aren't lying to you. So you can actually make accurate mixing decisions. Now, just because you have this doesn't mean that you, it's 100% accurate. It makes it better, but it's not 100% accurate. Accuracy comes from the acoustic treatment that you put in your room. What I have right now, not good, right? So this helps a little bit. That's why I mix on these just as much as I mix on my the speakers that I have because I know that my room is not acoustically treated enough that it doesn't matter what speakers I have. These headphones are going to do just as good of a job. So basically, we're going to set these, these new speakers up. Oh, let me show you what I had, actually. I was a student at Full Sail University in audio production, right? And th these are the, the speakers that they sent to me. I'm not anymore. I, I'm still a student at Full Sail, but I'm in digital cinematography. Hold on. So they sent me these right here. These are uh, PreSonus Aries 5s. So 5-inch cone and a tweeter. It's two-way, right? It's not... This little piece right here is the, the mid-range um, cone. 
on these new ones. So it's it would, it would be three-way, but this one's just two-way. One here, tweeter here, and one cone here. Basically, these are just good for, like, mid-range, like, low mids and up. The response under that is not very great. That's why I had to get a subwoofer, but whatever. I got the subwoofer, and it's the PreSonus Aries subwoofer that goes with these. I did have to buy those. But those are the ones I'm replacing. I went ahead and took them out. Now. Cool. Let's freaking unbox these things. All right. <laughs> freaking A, right, you bud. So exciting to upgrade. So as I'm doing this, I'll kind of explain. I'm going to switch these around. This is like, it's like keeps pulling on me when it's on this side. So I have to flip them around. So like my left ear is on my, or my left side is on my right ear. The, the right side is on the left. So when I'm mixing and I'm like pulling something to the left, it like pushes it to the right. So it's kind of weird, but who cares? That's if I'm recording because I have to have it on this side. Anyways, whatever. So, basically, this room is small, right? So, it's like 9 feet by 8.5 feet. It's almost a perfect square, and it's really small. So, in a small room, when it comes to acoustic treatment, what you have to do, your number one goal is bass trapping. Because the bass... Bass frequencies, they travel way further than high frequencies. And it's a lot harder to absorb those bass frequencies because they're so much longer. Meaning, I think uh, I think like a 50 hertz sound wave can travel like 33 feet or something like that. I don't know if that's correct. But if, let's just say, for example, I don't know the actual math or numbers. Let's say if, that, if a 50 hertz is, is 30 feet long... And 10K is only two feet long, then when it, I'm sorry, like 10 feet long, <laughs> whatever. When it bounces off the wall and comes back, that absorption, it has to go through the absorption, hit the wall, come back through the absorption, and come back to you, right? So that higher frequency is going to get absorbed a lot, a lot more than that super long 50 hertz sound wave because it's only going to slow it down a little bit so you need a lot of bass trapping in order to make a small room sound uh, not sound good but give you an accurate uh, an accurate response from your speakers okay okay what's this what's this Okay, so see this? Pay attention to this. It's saying the LPs, this is this is the IN. Uh right there. Those are the ones I got. They have there's another version called LP. And I'll show you how you can tell the difference just by looking at them if it's an LP or IN. So the INs, you can lay it on its side. I can put them sideways. The LPs they're saying, do not put them sideways. It messes it up. It messes up the sound. You need to pay attention to that. Because I'll show you something. Here's an example of not paying attention. I've been getting an inaccurate response. Like, these are not very good at all, right? It's like $400 for both of them, for the pair. I think it's $400 for the pair. Anyways, these, I think, were $500 for one. So it's like, it's definitely the Callies are an upgrade. But if you look on the back. Oh, shoot. Where's that? Hold on. Look, look right here. Up here. You see this knob right here? 
It says you can go Z at unity at zero or bring it down negative two dB or bring it down negative four dB. And it shows you and now a little outline that goes down and it shows you if you have your speaker set up like this, do zero. Like this, do negative two, like this, negative four. I don't know, that might be backwards. But basically, if you see, I have my, my speaker set up like this one. And it says to put it on the negative four setting. And I didn't have it on the negative four. I had it on the zero. So I wasn't even getting an accurate response because I didn't pay attention. So pay attention. Okay. Now, one, read the manual, two. Okay, so it's saying the tweeter is plus or minus 10 degrees. So make sure that the tweeter is in line with you. You know how you have, when you set your speakers up, right? You want the you want them to be level with your ear, right? But which one? Do I do the bottom cone, the big one, or the tweeter at the top? This is saying put the tweeter in line with your ears, not the cone. So I'll have the tweeters level with my ears. And then step number four, on the IN5s, the best width apart is a half a meter to three meters apart, but don't go any closer together or wider than that because then you won't get a good response. It won't be very accurate, which mine, I think, um, I don't know, but that's probably a uh, one meter, maybe one meter, one and a half meters apart. I have a 40, a 42 inch monitor in between them and then they're outside of that. So whatever that is. Now. Oh, fully. <laughs> Power cable. This is so exciting, man. I'm so freaking excited right now. I wonder, I really wonder how much better it's gonna sound in here. What if it doesn't sound better and I just wasted my money? Oh my gosh, dude. <laughs> Look at the difference between what I had and what I have now. Look. It has a cover for the cone, so you can't hear anything. It's amazing. Oh, it says remove before use. <laughs> Close one. Okay. I always keep my boxes. Right back in here. No. No. There. There. Oh my gosh, dude. Look at that. <laughs> I'm so excited. I cannot hide it. I'm so excited. And I cannot hide it. Oh my gosh. I'm going to put these two to, side by side, what I had and what I have now. And the, the pre-Sonus Aries 5s versus the Cali Audio IN5s. And the, oh. I just hit it on my desk. What an idiot. It's like my dad always said. What an idiot. You're an idiot. He was probably right. Okay. Oh, jeez. Sorry, that was loud. Here we go. Mm. I don't even know why I have these headphones on. I can't even... I'm not doing music. Why am I... Why do I have these on? <clears throat> okay. All right. 
Now, here's the old ones. Pretty Sonus fives. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. And then the Cali Audios. Holy cow. Woo! That's one beefy boy. One beefy baby. One one piece of beef. Oh, don't push in. You okay? You okay? Okay. How am I gonna do this? Aha, uh -huh. gotcha. Okay, look at the difference, guys. Look at that. Huge difference. Look at that. There's no way that it can't be better, right? I mean, bigger's not always better, but maybe. So, that's that. Dang it. Okay. Now, what I was going to show you is this. Let me put these back. So I actually might set these up as well. And like on top of these or something, I don't know. Or next, find a way to put it next to it just so I can have like a different reference. I can switch back and forth because it's like, this is kind of going to represent if you have, if someone's listening on some pretty crappy speakers and then this other one hopefully is going to be like, Okay, this is what you should mix on. But the main reason why I got this was for this right here. Okay, it'll show you. Racha. Now, I'll bring it closer, but it's saying... Do you have it on this type of desk? Do you, do you have it this close to the wall? Do you have it, like, where do you have it in your room? How, do you have it laying on its side? Is it straight up? Is it, where is it, right? And it'll tell you, based off of that, these little, these little knobs right here. Move this. set it up here these little things you're gonna flip whichever one's up that they tell you to all right now my room these are little uh room setups here and it shows you the difference so my room mine are on stands not the desk so it'll be one of these first three and then it says if it's right up next to the wall which it is then one, the first little uh, dipper thing will be down. The second one will be up. Ooh. Okay. And the third one's down. Okay, so the first three, there's eight little levers. The first three levers are for your speaker placement. Is it on a stand? How close is it to the wall? Is it on the desk? How close is it to the wall? What type of desk? Is it like a slanted desk? Is it a flat desk? Stuff like that. So, those are the first three. Now, the... The next four, four and five will be if you need to do like some sort of um, low frequency trim or high frequency trim. So low frequency trim would be the fourth and fifth. And then the high frequency will be the sixth and seventh. And then the eighth is if I have RCA, if I want to do RCA on or off, right? Which I don't have RCA. I have a TRS 
quarter inch line in plug or uh, what is that called? Um, adapter, not adapter, but it's it's a quarter inch. So th this is XLR right here. This is TRS. Um, it's like a, the quarter inch. And this is RCA, which I think is like the regular three and a half millimeter. I'm pretty sure, but I'm, I, I'm probably wrong. But I have this one. So I don't have RCA, so I will make sure that the eighth one is down. Now, high frequency trim. I don't know if I want to do that or need to do that, right? How do I know if I should do that? I think I am going to do a trim on the lows because I have a sub and it's a small room. That's my theory behind it. And then once I do my, my, uh, my sound ID reference, you know what, what am I doing? I'm sitting here trying to show you guys. And I still have my, my thing small. <laughs> what an idiot. What an idiot, what an idiot, what an idiot. Okay, so you can probably see that much better. Maybe, I don't know. Now, yeah, so that's what I'm gonna do. Sound ID, when I do the room analysis, will tell me if, if there's like, if I have this low frequency trim down, so if I wanna go negative two dB, it'll be five will be down and four will be up. Boom. So two will be up, four right up against the wall. Four will be up for a negative two dB trim on the low frequency. And I'm gonna leave the high frequency trim neutral. I'm not gonna do anything to the highs. And then I'll let sound reference tell me if there's like a, if there's like a big dip, like if it reads that there's a dip in the lows, then I will, then I will turn it back. If there, if it's still high, then I know I need to keep it there and then sound reference will kind of like flatten it out. So let's put these bad boys up. All right, two and four up. Cool. So now I know for the other one. Let's start with this one, you know what I'm saying? I can't believe it, dude. These things are freaking beefy. They eat at Arby's, baby. Like my dad joke. It's my dad joke for the day. Can you still hear me? Yeah, cool, cool, cool. All right. So here's the power cable. Let's get this box out of the way. Okay, now, I'll be back. If I'm not back in, if I'm not back in five minutes, you call the cops. Do you understand? The heck? Okay, I got it. Ugh. Not as limber as I once was. Uh, well, let's see. Aha, uh -huh. found it. Hmm. 
All right. Oh no, these aren't very long. Okay, got that. Let's put this speaker up. Okay. Here. So I'm going to put this. See, this is what I was talking about. And then it'll go into here like that. And then I'm going to put it up on my stand, which I definitely need to bring my stand down because remember it said the tweeter needs to be in line with my ear. So I'm going to take this off because I don't want it to fall off and then I have a tragedy. Yeah, that's gonna be a freaking tragedy. I'm just gonna take it off for now. Ugh. Okay, oh gosh. There. Let's move this. Damn. I think if I move it down to its lowest setting, or what if it's, what is this like? All right, moment of truth. Okay. Oh yeah, baby. Oh yeah, baby. That's what I'm talking about. Now, oh, I forgot to show you how you can tell if it's uh, IN or LP. The next one I'll show you. Actually, I'll just show you now. So I haven't hooked it up yet. You see this top one? This top cone is a circle, right? It's two circles. On the LP, on the LP, this top one is more of an oval shape. That's how you know. And honestly, <clears throat> the don't get the LPs. Just based off of what I have found, just get the INs. And Jeff Ellis only buys INs. I know I said I don't base all my decisions off of what he does, but when I was going back and forth like, oh, well, the LPs or the INs? I don't know what would I do. I remembered, oh, yeah, Jeff Ellis gets these or uses only these. So I looked and I watched the videos, and he only has INs, INAs. And then I started looking up, you know, which one do I use, LP or I, IN, and it, basically everybody's saying IN. So let's plug this bad boy in. You know what I'm saying? Bam. Like that. It's like that, y'all. It's like that, it's like that, y'all. Like that, okay. Now, I need to set it up to where it's in the middle. There, like that, and then I come back to my listening position and make sure that when you do an equilateral triangle, which, by the way, is not always the 
Sorry, it's like this light that I have here that shines on me, so it's not super dark. It kind of washes out, I'm sure you see. It kind of washes out this corner, and I hate it. But anyways, um, your equilateral triangle, right, which is not always the best listening position, by the way. If you think that, then do some research, right? But my setup, I am going to do the equilateral triangle. So I need to get that set, and then I'll lock in my stand in place so it doesn't move. But when you do the equilateral, you want your speakers not to go directly at your ear. Point it at the back of your head. Like, both of them should be pointed, like, right past your ear, not right at your ear, right? Those would be the best results. Okay. I think that's... Yeah, I think that's good. And I'm wondering if that's too close. Hmm. I might have to scoot back when I'm mixing. Let's just scoot it back. Actually, no. I'm just going to leave it right there. This is what I'm going to do. It's what I got to do. Just got to do it. Just gots to do it. Oh, baby. Oh, baby, this is about to get sick. It's about to get sickening in here. It's about to be so unhealthy up in this joint. All right, move my, my new microphone out of the way. <laughs> <clears throat> All right, number two. Put it right in front of me. Number two, we're almost, we're almost there. About to start cooking with bacon grease. <laughs> Dude, I don't even know what that means, dog. Actually, I do, I do know what that means because I cook with bacon grease. You know what the best thing to cook with is? Beef tallow. Better than butter, better than bacon grease, better than everything. It's amazing. All natural, baby. Mm. Thank you for hanging out with me, guys. I have, like, no friends. I need some bros to, like, hang out with, you know? So, thanks again. Like and subscribe. Here we go. You know what we should do? I think I'm gonna, um, I think I'm gonna record like a mixing tip tonight. <laughs> and then you can watch me do it. That'd be cool, right? There. There. All right, boys and girls. I'm sorry, men and women. They, thems. He's and hers. Then fluids up in this, up, up in this community. You got some fluids up in here or what? All right, let's let's get this one hooked up, baby. Oh, we need this plugged in. Power cable. What was like, what was the coolest thing that happened to you today? Put it in the comments. I really want to know. Like, I want to know who I'm hanging out with. Is that busted? 
No. Well, I hope not. I guess we'll see. Okay. So, it was two and four, right? Two. Hello, hello. Okay. Two and four, right? Two and four. Yes. Wait a minute. Yeah. So it's a shelf, a low low shelf, starting from 20. It'll go down two decibels, and it'll shelf its way up to 280 hertz. So everything under, by the time it gets flattened out, it's probably like at 150 or 200 is all going to be negative two decibels. Um, cool. Let's get this plugged in, baby. Oh, oh geez. Oh, gosh. All right, I'm going to have to move this microphone. Ugh. Oh, shoot. I have to plug in the freaking power cord first. Oh. Seriously, guys, if I'm not back in two minutes, you call the cops. Okay, got it. Boom. All Okay. Oh, dang it, I did it again. I freaking did it again, guys. <laughs> I have to lower my dang stand. Oh. Golly. These things are kind of heavy, man. Golly. Can you tell I'm from Texas? I say golly. Okay, I'm about two inches from the wall there. <clears throat> All right. Two inches. Okay, let's see. All right, boys and girls, in days and thems and flu fluids. Mm. 
That looks so much closer. Why does that look so close? Let's see. If I'm in my spot. Oh, it's about the same. Why does it look closer? It's the same. What? What, what is happening? Okay. Well, you know what I think? I think it's this light right here. It's like throwing my perception off. But I wonder if that's... No, it's about the same height. Why does it look so different? Weird, man. Well, I got my speakers. All right, so I'm not going to test them out. Um, I think if I, if I tested them, then I would have, um, I think it would, mess up the audio for this recording because I'd have to swap like this is the only cable this is the only microphone cable that I have so if I turned it off unplugged it plugged in a new one and then I had I would have to keep it off um, to use this right and I don't know. I, I think it would mess it up. So I'm going to do the room analysis. Unless y'all don't care. I think that's what I'll do so I can show y'all how to do it. Yeah, that's what I'll do. I'll show you how to use this sound ID reference. I think um, the software with the pencil mic is like, 300 bucks if you're a student apply like go on their website or just type in sound id reference student discount and then you'll have to send in like a letter of verification from your school pro proving that you are you're a student and then they will approve you or not approve you which they will if you have a letter of verification or letter of yeah verification or letter of enrollment i think is what it's called so you'll do that and then you'll get it half off. Everything's half off for students. So $300 or 150, I'll leave that part up to you. But this is how you do it. Now, this part, um, I'm, there's going to be no audio. Like you might hear like the little boop thing because it might come through the actual computer because the program is on the computer. But I don't think so. But I'm going to have to turn off my microphone in my recording software so I can turn on the microphone for these speakers. And then um, and then I'll, I'll plug it back in. I hope that the, the audio comes back through. And if not, I apologize in advance. But it's about to get real, it's about to get quiet. So if you're cool with me, doing this it actually i'll probably just put some like some music or whatever in the background for this part if i find out later that the recording doesn't have sound like if you can't hear the like whoop then whatever but anyways um or i'll probably just fast forward to this part so let's get to it okay guys no audio for a little bit but stay tuned, and I'll show you how. I'm going to move my, my dome piece. Remember, we got to always move, remove my dome piece from the middle. Okay? And then I'll show you how to do this. Come on. There we go. Right there. We'll do it like this. Make it bigger. There we go, like that. Cool. Better? Awesome. Now, I already started a new preset, but what you would do is you would click this Add New Preset, and it would bring up this new preset, and then it would say Select Your Calibration Profile. 
and you're going to create new speaker profile, right? If you are trying to flatten some headphones, then like I did for right here, I clicked this one and I clicked the headphones that I have. Right now, we're going to do some new speakers, so I'm going to click on that. It's probably going to take me to the interwebs. Oh, nope. Here we go. About to get started, baby. Okay, look. You have your... Let's pull this out. Okay. You have your left speaker, right speaker. So it's saying, do you have a two-speaker stereo system? Yes. It's already reading it, right? I have an Avid Matrix or DAD family interface with SPQ proce processing. What is that? I have no idea. Um, but I know I don't have anything that's Avid. Avid is like, Avid's the ones, they make Pro Tools. But I don't have any of their stuff. So we'll go next. Say, yes. I do, my listening position is basically right in the middle of the room. So yeah, pretty much. Okay, setup checklist. Phantom Power plus 48 is on. Yes, it is. Your input and output is routed to the same device or uses the same clock source. Yes, it does. So the clock source, if you don't know what that is, is basically everything in my entire system runs off of my audio interface's clock. I have a Scarlett 18i20, and the clock inside of that, meaning is everything in time, like, what is everything? Um, there's a lot better examples out there. Just look it up. Just look it up. What master clock, whatever, for music production, whatever. Anyways, it goes off of my audio interface. Mu microphone signal cannot be heard through the speakers. Ooh. I don't know. Okay, now I got to figure this out. So I got to take this out and put this in. So look at that. When I do this, it does a thumbs up. Watch. It knows that I did a thumbs up. Look at that. That's cool. <laughs> okay. Peace out. It's about to get quiet. I'm going to set this back up to where it was. Hello? Man, I don't know where it was. I feel like I'm like, am I talking too loud now? Okay, I'm going to mute it.
Okay. There we go. You see that? That is how you use Sonarworks Sound Reference ID. Just took the room measurements. Oh, this thing. Okay. So we just took the room measurements with our new, I got new Cali Audio IN5s. If you uh, didn't know that before, I don't know how you wouldn't. But um, if, I, if I decide to share just the... Sonarworks calibration and room analysis as its own video. Just basic rundown is I took, or I just got some new Cali, Cali Audio IN5 speakers and I just set them up and then um, basically I did a new room analysis based off of those new speakers. And that's what you just saw me do. Okay, so now... I might actually have to close this. Uh, Quit Logic Pro. Uh, yeah. Save. Cool. And then I'll open it back up and then I'll show you. Okay. <clears throat> and close this. Quit that. Basically, I have to reset everything or just like kind of reboot everything. Just because um, I had to, like, in order for this new calibration to show up, it's, everything has to be rebooted. So, and then it'll show. It's just kind of like when you get a new plug in, you download it. If you have a session pulled up, you have to close it and then reopen Logic, Pro Tools, whatever you have for it to show. So open this up. And then I'll show you what happens. The way you use sound reference sound ID reference is you put it as the very last plug-in on your master channel in, in your session in your DAW. So that way the new calibration and the new flattened response for your speakers in your room that we literally just did, that way we can turn that calibration on at the very last so everything goes through that calibration and out your speakers and you are hearing an accurate flat response. Man, this is taking forever. I wonder if I'm too loud. No, I think I'm good. I think I'm... Oh, okay, so I did... I So I tried out this Weiss uh, DSer. It's a mastering de -esser, but I put it on a vocal in here. And it was, I just did the free trial, um, just tried it out, and it's pretty dang good. I like it. I might buy it. Right now, it's, um, at the time of this recording, it's like 65% off or something on SoftTube. You can get it for like $79 instead of $200, I think is what it is. But it's legit. Which, now that my free trial is over, I'm going to have to re... I do have to fix this mix. I sent it over to the the artist and he said, yeah, how about, we need to bring some vocals down here and just little tweaks, right? Just normal stuff. So I have to do that. But since the trial's over, I have to find a different de -esser. And so right here. I need to, it's not going to show because the trial is over. Uh, I don't have it, but I'm going to have to replace that. Now, sound ID reference. You see this is the last one in the chain. Very last plug-in. 
open that up. New version is available. Install. Install, which I'm probably going to have to freaking close this again and reopen it. Goodness. We're exactly an hour and a half in. Y'all are still hanging out with me? Man, y'all the real ones. Y'all are what is called OGs, the real ones. I think in in France, might be, it might be Italy, but they call those people, those types of people, the real ones. Okay, now... For some reason, um, all right here. So I'm going to click on new preset and click on that, click on the ones I just did. And now, see, watch if I turn this off. So that was the response that the room, that it captured on the room analysis. Right here. It's like typical combing filtering, or comb filtering up here all the way up through probably, what is this, 100, 200, 3, 4, 5, or through about 1,000, 1K. And then it's actually kind of, kind of flat almost and then huge dip right here and then boost so basically what it's going to do is i turn this on and it inverts the response so that way it says your room sounds like this we're going to make your speakers okay your room sounds like the purple we're going to make your speakers we're going to invert that and turn your speakers into this so that way it balances out and flattens out your response in your room. So that's that. That is how you do uh, sound uh, sound ID reference from Sonarworks. Again, um, one hundred and fifty dollars um, for let's see for this pencil mic. And the software for a, with the student discounts half off. So I think it's $300 total if you buy it full price. If you don't have an RTA mic, then, um, then yes, you do need to get it with this RTA mic. But if you already have one, you don't need to buy the mic. Just buy the software and it's like 100 bucks, I think. But that is how you do it peeps so like and subscribe and you have fun you have a great day all right all right peace okay that i just did that just in case i decide to use that portion as a video chop it up and make it a, a short form video look at you you done saw me make a video while making a video. That's kind of cool. That's fun, right? right? I mean, like, how do I put this in here? Nope. It's like this. Nope. It's like this. Yep. That's it. Right there. When I move, you move. Just like that. Bam. Okay. Cool. So. Put this up. Damn. Oh my gosh, I got new speakers. Okay, I'm going to turn off the sound real quick. Ah! 
I do have to re reboot it. Dang it. Uh, okay. Let's reboot. See, this is what real life is like. All these YouTube videos that are edited, it makes music production sound or look so easy and blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, dude. No, you run into problems literally every session. Your your biggest your biggest strength in music production and mixing and mastering is going to be your ability to troubleshoot because it could literally mean the difference between um a whole day's worth of trying to figure out how to fix something and you just missed out on a whole day of mixing. Or five minutes, because you already knew how to do it, right? So learn your stuff, read your manuals, do all the things that you need to do to make sure that you have, yeah, I'm coming through, that you are good at troubleshooting, right? Obviously, you don't know what you don't know, so you're going to run into problems. But So this is something that kind of comes with over time, which there's gonna, there's plenty of things that I still, I run into stuff all the time, and I'm like, dude, I just know this is going to take like three hours. So, and it does. So, little tidbit. Okay. Um, what? Freaking a what, you bud? Ultra calibration, Cali. Boom. Okay, sorry guys. I am sorry, but I have to, I have to hear these. Okay, I have to hear these. So I'm going to turn my mic off for literally... 15 seconds and I'm gonna listen to this song like maybe mm, I'm just gonna play like the, the busiest part of the song I don't want to waste a bunch of time but I just want to hear them Oh, man. Oh, man. They're so much better. Oh, my gosh. They're so much better. Wow. Oh, my gosh. Okay, so the the thing I... The, the biggest difference that I just heard is... It's good. I just know that these are going to translate so much better. Because... Oh, jeez. Okay, that's better, right? This is going to translate so much better because what I just heard in these that I did not hear in the other speakers, but I did hear when I went and listened to on headphones, um, 
and then on uh, in my car, the things that I was hearing out where people actually listen to the music, the brittleness on the vocals. If you saw me uh, mix this song, I think, did I do a mix? I don't know if I mixed it or mastered it, but either way, there's a video of me mastering or mix mixing this song. And I was like, there's like a brittleness to the vocals, right? And I didn't, I wasn't hearing it on the other ones. But this one, I literally, that's the first thing I noticed was, oh my gosh, there it is. So I know that these are going to translate better in the real world. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited. Yes. I don't know what that is, but I'm just excited, guys. Yes. Okay. Well, there you have it. I think we're done. That's an hour and 40 minutes. Thank you for hanging out with me. I really, really enjoyed it. Obviously, I did. I hope you enjoyed it. I'm sure if you don't have things to do, like you got some time to kill, just jump on this series and watch watch this this uh, Journey to Pro series because it's just like a podcast. That's that's how I that's how I see it, right? It's kind of like a podcast. Like, why do we watch podcasts or listen to them? We don't really know, other than the fact that they're talking about something that we enjoy uh, or that we're passionate about, and we like listening or watching people talk about things that we're passionate about, right? And because it is long form, I feel like this is kind of, this Journey to Pro series is like a, my version of that. It's kind of kind of cool. So if you uh, got something out of this, make sure you put it in the comments. Um, if just some, any ideas, maybe new video ideas, for outside of of the Journey to Pro series, um, or you have some some things like some mixing tips that you would like to know. Anything you got some new plugins that you want me to know about or everybody to know about? Like I love finding new plugins, so just whatever, just drop it in the comments, and then also let me know if you got something out of it. Have you even heard of sound reference? Have you even heard of Cali Audio speakers? Have you even heard of Mojave microphones? Have you even... Mojave, by the way, is is Royer. I'm sure... You, well, maybe you have, maybe you haven't. But the Royer microphones... So I forget his first name, but his last name is Royer. And he has another company, microphone company, called Royer something and he actually started this company Mojave and basically I don't know why he started two different companies like competing with each other or I, I, it's beyond me I don't know but it's the same guy so um they're good quality you have any questions about that if you didn't you know if you learned something from the sound the room analysis drop it in there uh let me know and also, like and subscribe, and I will see you tomorrow. Peace out, Cub Scouts.